Oh, jeez. <laughs> Let's try this again. Hello. It's good to see you again. So I've been looking at home electricity usage monitors. Not the big ones that you put in your fuse panel where you can monitor the entire house, but smaller ones like this. This is a kilowatt uh, P4400. It's nice because it plugs into the wall and you can plug a device that you want to test right in the front here and you can read uh, you know, voltage that you're feeding the device with, with or the current draw of the device or the wattage. For 30 bucks, this is nice on the test bench because I can, rather than use a meter to monitor those things or an expensive meter, I can just plug you know, the device that I want to test into here and get a lot of good information off of this. So what I decided to do was I decided to do um, a test on a couple of those devices. And one of them that I'm going to test is this uh, D85-2058. All right, this is something you can buy on eBay and um, can do a, do a couple of things that the other ones can't do. Now, you can't plug this into your fuse panel. It's not big enough for that, but certainly it has quite a bit of, quite a bit of capability. The only problem is, is that it has a separate current transformer and there's no way to really plug the thing in. All right, so what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to mount this thing in a... Uh, and a two gang outlet box, plastic outlet box. I hope it's going to fit in there with a with a uh, with a cover so so that uh, that D80, D85 is going to kind of fit in this hole and I'm going to have an outlet and be able to plug this thing into the wall and then I can plug in whatever I want to test into the outlet that's going to go there. Okay? Sounds pretty simple. But there's a couple of glitches. Stick with me and you'll see what they are. Let's get to it. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of making this device more user-friendly for my applications, let's take a look at some of its functions, its specifications, the parts and pieces that come with it, and a uh, just a conceptual wiring diagram for it. We'll start off with, with the functions that this thing can perform. Looking at the slide, we can see that it will display voltage, current, line frequency, power factor, active power, and it's called electrical energy here. It's actually uh, accumulation of, uh, of active power. You know it better as kilowatt hours. can display all of those six functions simultaneously on its front panel. They are in color, just like it's shown here on the, in this picture. It's actually a pretty nice display. It's not that big, the display, but the coloring helps the, the points stand out a little bit. Obviously, you're not going to read it from across the room, but you know, for something that's uh, you know a couple of feet away from you, I think it's I think it's a really nice display. This has uh, there's many claims that the manufacturer makes for specifications, and I've listed them here. The two that we're going to talk about right now are AC voltage and AC current. If you want to hear more about the rest of the specifications of this device, in particular when I compare it to a kilowatt uh, P4400, I have put together another video where I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison and I'm going to start off with a comparison of, of their specifications. But the ones we're going to talk about right now or the ones that we care about for this video are the AC voltage rating and the AC current rating. The AC voltage uh, rating is 40 to 300 volts AC. That's a pretty good range. And interestingly enough, the AC voltage that feeds this, the AC voltage that it's reading, that it's going to give you the value for, is also the AC voltage that powers this device, powers the circuitry. So their claim is that if you put 40 volts AC onto this device, it will turn on, the displays will light up, and it'll be able to, dis to calculate and display all the information, the, the six functions that we talked about, with as little as 40 volts AC input. We're going to check that out, see how that is, but that, that's pretty good. Uh, other energy usage monitors, you know, the smaller ones like the kilowatt uh, P4400, it'll read down to about 80 volts and then it'll shut off. 
you know, it's or the numbers start getting crazy. So being able to go all the way down to 40 volts and read the parameters, that's, that's a, a nice feature. Typically, uh, when I'm troubleshooting a piece of equipment, I might run it at 50 or 60 volts initially. And, uh, and typically, if I want to know the current draw on that device, I need to tie up one of my meters, one of my expensive meters, in order to do that. With this device, with as low as 40, vo uh, 40 volts AC input, I should be able to see the current draw and the power consumption of a device that, that I'm testing out. So we'll see what happens there. Also, the 300 volt range here in the United States, you know, typically a house will have 240 volt center tapped coming into the house. So it's 120 volts on either side, but it's uh, 240 volts, single phase power coming in. And this device can actually read that 240 volts, which is, which is a nice feature. So I'm not limited to, uh, to 15 amp, 120 volt circuits with this. I can actually read 240 volts, you know, as used throughout the house. Now, this device only has a current rating of 100 amps, so it's not like I could uh, read all the power coming into the house. You know, there's, there's home energy um, devices that you can put into your, into your fuse panel and you can, you know, see the total power consumption for your house. This device doesn't have that capability, but certainly I can use it for reading things like, you know, power usage of, a, of, the ov of your oven or a stove or a dryer or, you know, just about any individual device in the house that uses 240 volts. So that's a nice feature. With it, though, comes a little bit of, a pain, of pain, right? Because it doesn't have any wiring on it. You know, it kind of leaves it up to you to, to figure out where you want to put it and then, you know, wire it safely in that application. Mine, we're going to wire, I'm going to wire mine up so that I can read 120 volt circuit with it. That's why I'm putting it in the box. I won't be able to read 240 with it unless I take it out of the box and rewire it. But I mean, it's, you know, those are nice features, uh, nice capabilities that this has, all right? Again, the rest of the specifications, if you want to hear a discussion on those or see how it compares to other energy usage monitors, check out my other video that's uh, linked below down in the, uh, in the description. Here's what the uh, D85 dash 2058 actually looks like the parts that are associated with it it consists of a uh, of a, a a black box assembly if you will and that yellow and black donut looking device is a current transformer that's how it figures out some of the functions for instance like active power kilowatt hours power factor in order to do those to calculate those values it needs to know what the current in the circuit is and that yellow and black donut is what tells the circuitry in the black box what the current flow is in the circuit now in order for this to work i need to be able to thread the wire through the center of that donut one of the wires it doesn't make a difference whether it's uh, the hot or the neutral but i need to be able to thread the wire through the center of that donut in order for it to uh, in order for the device to be able to see what the current flow is through the circuit and that's where some of the pain comes in right you know it's not all you know one easy to use device you, you got to think about what you're what you're doing with it now that current transformer is sized for a hundred amp wire the hole in the center is it's about a half inch in diameter if you look up a a uh, hundred amp wire an AWG number two insulated wire is about three eighths of an inch in diameter. It'll easily three eighths inch diameter wire will fit through a half inch hole. In fact, if you look up uh, current transformers, the minimum size for a current transformer, the ID for a AWG number two wire is is half inch, and it just so happens that's half inch, so that works out pretty convenient. But that current transformer. It's, you know, it's a little over an inch in diameter that for OD, and it's really difficult, you know, when you want to put it into a two-gang outlet box, creates some problems, right? And we're going to see that when we, you know, look at the mechanical aspects of mounting this thing. So, in the right-hand draw, on the right-hand uh, picture, we show the bottom side of the, uh, the D85. It shows the wiring. So, to the blue terminal board, we're going to wire up the current transformer. 
It's a two-wire device. On the left-hand side of the device, the green terminals, we're bringing in AC power. And again, that AC power is one for display, right? And, uh, whatever AC power I'm applying there will show up as one of the functions as AC voltage on the front panel. And that's also uh, powering the circuitry. So again, at 40 volts, it'll light the screen and there's enough power there to power the circuitry so that the device presumably can do all the calculations you know, properly and away you go. Now there's one thing about this device that, uh, that I found interesting. There's absolutely no agency listings on this device. There's, there's nothing. There's no UL listing. There's no CE mark. There's no Intertech uh, rating. None of that, right? So I'm not sure if I would want to leave this thing plugged in all the time because there are no listings on it. Uh, certainly for test, you know, it's not going to be a problem, right? But um, I don't know if I would leave it plugged in all the time. There's no mention of of any listing, any testing agency listing. So just be aware of that. Here's a, uh, a, a wiring diagram. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fit all this stuff into a plastic two gang outlet box. So I have the, uh, the, the D85-2058 mounted in uh, on one side of uh, uh, the two gang uh, box. The current transformer uh, needs to be able to, you know, read current and power going to an outlet. I'm putting in an outlet. So this is in series with the outlet, and I'll be able to plug a device under test with that outlet into that outlet. I'm going to plug it into, uh, I have a 120 volt, 20 amp plug. I know it shows a 15 amp plug and a 15 amp receptacle. This is really, I'm really setting it up for 20 amps. I have uh, a 12 gauge wire coming through this. So this is just, uh, you know, just a an informational drawing only, if you will. All right. So the power comes in on the right side. You plug it into the wall. I tap off of uh, both of those leads, the hot and the neutral. And I use that, I'm going to use that for powering the D85. I'm going to run one of those wires. And in this case, I'm going to run the hot wire through the center of the current transformer, come up to the appropriate side of the, of the outlet. That current transformer is going to wire into uh, the blue terminal board on the D85, nice and simple. And on the neutral side of the outlet, I'm going to hook up the neutral wire. So what's going to happen here is, is anything I plug into that outlet is going to draw current through the wires and the current transformer will be able to read the current. The uh, voltage input will power the, uh, the D85 and simultaneously show me what the voltage is across the outlet. And it'll give me all the other values that are shown on the D85 right now. So I think it'll be pretty nice, you know. You don't have to do it the way that I'm going to do it. But I think this box is going to be pretty handy. So this D85, it costs about, uh, you can buy them on eBay. You see them all over eBay. It's about, um, it's about $16 or $17 delivered, which is a lot cheaper than the $30 for the kilowatt P. 4400 but the uh, d85 needs some support equipment in order for it to work obviously you can cobble acid on a bench uh you know leaving you know leaving it hanging out and be a little bit more dangerous i actually want to use this uh you know more day to day so that's why i'm putting it in a box pretty it up so so let's take a look at uh what's involved to do this mechanically okay let's go over uh, what i think some of the potential problems might be and what the solutions are. And some of these are pretty simple problems. You know, for starters, um, I want to mount I want to mount this in this switch plate and the hole isn't big enough. It's it's long enough, but it's not wide enough, right? I think it's about uh, it's about an eighth inch. I need to open that up by about an eighth of an inch. That's pretty easy to do. I'll do that with a Dremel. I just have to make sure that I uh, I get the right dimension. It's this upper dimension so that it'll sit flush. I think it's wide enough this way that this will snap in. It's got these little snappy, snappy hoodads here, and I think it'll snap in. So that's pretty pretty easy to do. All right. 
<clears throat> somebody was asking me why I wanted to use a plastic box and a, an isolated ground outlet. And I'm going to be using this thing all over the place, including um, with my isolation transformer. And I got all kinds of crap laying on the bench, you know, and I was, I'm always nervous about if there's, uh, if I'm working on something with a grounded chassis, um, I'm going to connect the ground back through, through a ground screw someplace. So, so the plastic box and the isolated ground outlet kind of make sure that the only ground connection will be through the ground screw, right? Even this uh, center screw on an isolated uh, ground outlet is connected up to the bale, the mounting bale, right? So, so if something shorts the screw or whatever, as long as there's no connection in my isolation transformer to the ground pin, um, I'll always be isolated. And if there is a connection to the ground pin, right on the on the outlet, I'll have a ground through the uh, through the ground screw. Right. This bale won't be uh, won't be grounded because it's in a plastic box, and it really doesn't make a difference as far as I'm concerned. So that's the reasoning behind that. The box itself. Uh, we'll come back to the box in a second. This guy's the problem right here, the, the current transformer. A uh, couple of things, and I think I have them addressed. I want to make sure that the wire goes through the center of the uh, of this uh, current transformer. And things I was thinking of using was I have this uh, half-inch diameter spacer with a uh, 3 16 hole through the center of it, and the spacer is about one inch long. Uh, I, can, I can glue that in place through the center of the CT and it just kind of makes sure you know the wire can go through it a little bit of an angle that's okay as long as uh, as long as it's centered through the CT and this 3 16 hole is uh, is plenty large for this uh, number 12 wire to fit through so I think that that could work pretty nice and I can just hot glue it in place another thing I was thinking of and uh, was I actually put two pieces of plastic tubing I put a plastic tubing in a plastic tubing again I have a hole in the center that's uh, large enough for me to put uh, for me to run the wire through all right and then I can put that through the center of the CT and I can put, uh, you know, ties, Teflon ties on both sides. I can make this any length that I want, just to give me a little bit more straight length there, you know. So there's a couple of options that I can go with. I think, I think that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Now mounting this guy, this guy is really big, right? He's, uh, he's got a half inch hole. It's, um, you know, I forget what that dimension is, and of course I don't have a scale here. It's uh, it's over an inch. It's like an inch and uh, three sixteenths in diameter, and uh, there's quite a bit of stuff going on in this box. This box really isn't that deep compared to uh, compared to the outlet, and compared to the uh, to the uh, the D um, eighty five, whatever the hell it is. I can't remember that. It's not it's not that deep, right? So there's really not a lot of space in this box to mount things. Believe it or not, I think I can do it. Once I put the uh, put the plugs in, I got plugs, and I'm gonna bring a wire in through uh, through the the uh, the SO cord through uh, through a fitting, probably like like this fitting right here, and the rest I'll just put plugs in, including the one on the bottom. I think this little protuberance on the bottom here, I'm going to have to cut flush. And then I think, um, I have to see once I get everything cut, but I think I'll be able to, with this protuberance gun, I'll be able to mount the CT low enough on the bottom of the box that, um, that I'll be able to bring the wire, bring the wires in. Um, if I make the length of that correct, I'll be able to turn the wire through the CT, the hot wire through the CT, get enough straight, straight length going through it, and then bring it down around and back up to the outlet. So, so the way this would be is the outlet would sit on, uh, would sit on, the, on the left side, and the um, uh, monitor would sit on the right side, and the wire would come in under the outlet to make sure that I have enough enough slack there. So I think if I think if I cut this out, 
cut this flush once I put the plug in. It's got a screw in plug, you know, just to keep it nice and clean. If I cut that off, I might ha I might have enough space. The cover I chose, this is actually like a goof plate cover, so it's a little bit larger, so it sits nice and flush. In order to make sure that it's tight on this side, I, I bought myself a blanking cover. All right, and the blank because these holes here don't line up with these holes are are spaced for an outlet that screws in a different place. So what I did was I got a blanking cover, and I'm just going to cut the blank off, and I'm going to use the ears off of the the blanking cover to allow me to screw this thing down down on here. I think it'll look pretty nice when it's all done. So shouldn't be too bad, you know. Once I get cooking on it, um, I think hot glue is going to be the be the flavor of the day here so let me put the thing together and uh, hopefully it'll it'll all come together quickly and we'll see what what happens soon all right stay tuned should be interesting here's a little update for you uh, I've cut a couple of pieces so here's the cover and what I did on the cover was um, on the outer edge to make sure that the uh, instrument is as far away from the center line give me as much room for the current transformer as possible I cut this edge I cut about an eighth of an inch off of here with my Dremel so it didn't come out too bad right and this this thin plastic this is a nice cover this is a Leviton cover it's not you know one of their heavy ones but it's certainly heavy enough for what we're trying to do so and and my little botches there will be hidden under the uh, under the lip of, uh, of this guy it actually fits in there uh, fits in there pretty nice you know it snaps snaps right in so so that'll that'll be good right and that'll just drop in the drop in the box like that with with the outlet next to it I think that'll look that'll look nice when it's all done now as far as the box is concerned what I did was, is, is I did cut off that bottom uh, bushing that was sticking up. I put all the plugs in. Um, it also has these, uh, these fittings for, you know, adapters for the cable clamps. I put this fitting in with uh, red Loctite, and I put the cable clamp in with red Loctite. So I don't think that's going to go anywhere when I'm done. And I, I put the plug in the bottom. I cut that flush. And I think that I'm going to be able to... What did I do with the current transformer? Did I lose it here? Oh, it's right here. I think uh, with that piece cut out, everything sits low enough that, um, that it'll all fit in here. Everything, everything's going to fit in here nice. The only, the only issue is, is I need to take the bottom of this case off, right? So, which, which I don't think is a big deal if I take that off because uh, there's no there's no fingers under here right so and everything will fit together nice with that uh, current transformer in there and I think I think it'll all be cool so um, let's see what happens all right when I come back hopefully the whole thing will be together and working keep your fingers crossed So there you go. I think it came out pretty nice and it's going to make a nice addition on my workbench. Overthought as only an engineer could. Stay tuned for my comparison between the D85 and not one, but two kilowatt P4400s. A brand new one and one that I've had for about 12 years. I think you'll be surprised at the results. Keep your eyes open. It's coming soon. Until then, be safe and enjoy.